Hello and welcome to the Guna Tool. Back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series, our show in which we look at the players that Arsenal have been linked to, break them down in an analytical and statistical way with the help of, of course, some experts to give us all the inside knowledge on who these players are. Are they up to standard? Are they players that Arsenal should be looking into? And also, at the end of our shows, getting you guys involved in the chat box, getting your live thoughts, your raw reactions, Actions, if you will, to these players. And today we are starting to talk about a young Brazilian kid. I mean, we've heard this kind of thing before. And not only that, but he shares the surname with another one of our young Brazilians, Martinelli. This time, though, it's Mateus Martinelli uh, from Fluminense. And uh, he is someone that I literally knew nothing of before a few weeks back when I started to do the research and get prepped and ready for today's video. So as always, what we're going to cover, we're going to go into the expert insight. I've got some fantastic uh, expert insight for you today. We're going to have a look at a couple of... Uh, of examples of kind of his play uh, and graphic analysis. Go into then the statistical focus of comparing him to a like-minded kind of player in the Arsenal team. And then at the end of the video, of course, you'd be getting your viewer reaction. So without further ado, let's get our expert insight. And this week we're joined by Ewan Marshall, who is a Brazilian football expert based in Sao Paulo, who has written for the likes of The Telegraph and Al Jazeera. So let's crack on with Marshall here from the wilderness of Sao Paulo uh, to speak to you a little bit about Mateus Martinelli, uh, Arsenal's latest transfer target here from Brazil. Um, so first of all, I think it's good to clear up that he is no relation to Gabriel Martinelli, at least as far as we know. Um, but it seems like technical director Edu is involved in much of the speculation between Mateus Martinelli and Arsenal. Uh, whether he has a thing for players with the surname Martinelli or not, you know, we don't know yet. But in any case, Bringing in Mateus Martinelli would be a, a very different prospect from Gabriel because Gabriel was playing for a really tiny countryside club in Sao Paulo. Even those who saw him play regularly were shocked at how fast he hit the ground running um, in North London. Well, Mateus, he comes from a really established youth setup uh, for Fluminense in Rio de Janeiro, a club which has over the years produced Marcelo, Thiago Silva, Fabinho, and most recently has sent Hicharlison and João Pedro straight to England, where there were great successes. So that has made Fluminense a bit, of a, a bit of a target for major European clubs in terms of their youth setup. And, you know, on to Martins, Martinelli himself. He made his debut last year at the age of 19 in a kind of otherwise inconspicuous nil-nil against uh, Red Bull Bragancino. But... He went into the side and he stayed in the side. Uh, he was there until the end of the season through Fluminense's run-in, um, in which they did really well. They managed to finish fifth, uh, qualifying for the Copa Libertadores, and the end of the season on a nine-game unbeaten run, which is, you know, quite impressive. And, you know, although you know, fifth doesn't sound that much, this is a club which, despite being one of the really major sides in Rio de Janeiro, they haven't been in the Copa Libertadores since 2013. Um, and they've had a couple of really dicey seasons recently, so being able to come back to continental competition is you know, very important for them. And Mateus Martinelli played a great part in that, really did. And so he came into the team as a defensive midfielder, uh, which when you play for Fluminense requires you to have a lot of you know, time in possession. You need some good vision to play through the strikers and you kind of need a bit of game management. You need to be able to dictate the tempo, um, which Mateus Martinelli has done well so far. Um, he seems, his passing is quite crisp, he seems to be in control, he seems to have that kind of thing of, you know, having the head of a 30-year-old on a 19-year-old's shoulders, you know, that sort of real maturity uh, for such a young player. And he has these really incisive passes through to the forwards, a lot of long balls, which you've seen quite, quite an awful lot from him, it's becoming a little bit of a trademark of his. And he appears to, he appears to do well when hurried by opponents and um, being put under pressure. But whether he'd be able to do that at the top level in the Premier League is another question. And also, if you've been looking at those YouTube highlights, you might have seen Mateus Martinelli hitting in a 25-yard screamer against Goyas, which is, you know, very impressive goal. Shows he has an excellent right foot. But it's not really something we've seen from his game that much. He averages about one shot a game. Um, so I think that might be something he's been, he will work on in the future. But right now, his game is a lot more possession-based. 
Um, a lot more trying to bring in the midfield and forward line into the game. And, you know, it's there's a long way to go, I think, for Mateus Martinelli. He's a very raw prospect. Um, he's had five months in professional football, so there's not a lot concrete we can really say about him. But definitely an interesting talent in the future, and could be a good shout for Arsenal. So a massive thank you there to Ewan Marshall. You can find him on Twitter, unsurprisingly, at Ewan Marshall. Um, and of course, you'll find him through our links at the Green and Talk TV on Twitter. Um, it's interesting getting the insight and hearing about a guy that sounds remarkably similar to, of course, some players that we already have. And that's why it's so important to, of course, compare that and look at some of the comparisons. Before we do, though, it's important, of course, to have a look at where and how he looks on the pitch. And one of the key kind of examples I wanted to show you was just little bits of his interplay. He's a lot more mobile than necessarily kind of our deep line playmaker or our defensive-minded player, the likes of uh, Granit Xhaka, for instance. He likes to get on the ball, likes to play a little in one-twos and work those tracks triangles and also can get into the final third and, and set up a chance like you're seeing here uh, for the striker to score Fluminense's second goal of the match but the, positionally what you're looking at is a player that does like to dominate the kind of defensive midfield part of the pitch but does progress into the other areas he skews typically more towards the left hand side really despite being right footers and played more as a left centre midfielder this season of course the Brazilian seasons run from 2020 uh, yearly uh, and then a new season starts in 2021 so this is across the, the debut season and the five or so games that he's played this season. So to compare with one of Arsenal's players, I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at how he compares to Danny Ceballos. Danny Ceballos is a player, of course, that has played a lot of his time at Arsenal in, again, a deep line playmaking role next to a Granite Xhaka, next to a Thomas Partey, not really playing in his more natural number 10 that we saw him play at Real Betis. So I thought it'd be a good idea to see how those two compare against one another. And you'll see how surprisingly similar some of those stats are. Starting off on the defensive side of things with his defensive duels 8.39 defensive duels and a 66.8 percent success rate is better than that of Danny Ceballos and you'd expect it to be as a player that is a little bit more physical than the Spaniard but interceptions Ceballos takes it in that area and that's maybe an area of Mateus's game that needs to be stepped off note how I'm calling him Mateus to avoid any type of confusion between him and Gabriel Martinelli losses to recoveries are very impressive I and mean, in considering the fact that we don't typically see when we do these uh, these tactical breakdowns that the players having a greater amount of recoveries compared to their losses he actually does here 8.02 compared to the 7.02 losses is impressive and Danny Sabas himself is a very kind of impressive ratio too it's ever slightly more negative than it is positive but having those two so close together does show the impressiveness that he has shown maybe behind the scenes in terms of his offensive duels and winning those tackles and winning those kind of battles in the offensive half and the opposition's half 7.61 that's what we're talking about there is he does like to push forwards he does he's not so disciplined to be in the same half hence why the comparison to Sabayos someone else that does move further forward 46.6 of those are being won so less than 50 percent we'd like it to be a bit higher and Danny Sabayos is getting nearly 60 percent of his offensive duels being won in that comparison moving on to the passing area of his game 89.1% passing accuracy, averaging just under 50 passes per match. He's someone that's trusted, not trusted clearly as much and as possession-based as, as Danny Sabas is, but in possession, he is good with the ball, just under 90%. And as he gradually develops, you'd expect that to be into the 90s. Fingers crossed. I know coming to the Premier League could be making it things a little bit trickier, but still 89.5% passing accuracy is very good for a player that's trying to progress the ball. And we'll come on to some of that progression in a second. Speaking of which, passes into the final third, 7.02. 78.4% accuracy, not as good as Danny Ceballos, but still a good statistic to see seven passes into the final third per match is very good. And a percentage accuracy near 80% is always welcome as well. Finally, looking then at the pass ratio, he is a progressive player. He does pass the ball considerably more than he passes it backwards. 13.55 forward passes to 5.5 backward passes in comparison to Danny Ceballos' 18.63 to 8.2. And it's, it's good to see that Danny Ceballos, as we know, is a very kind of forward thinking player. He does lose the ball a fair amount but as we saw from the recoveries and lost that that is something that Mateus Martinelli is a lot more reserved in it is a lot more comfortable in possession dribbles though it's good to see that we've got another player that's more reserved uh, in rather a reserved position on the pitch still able to move with the ball just under three dribbles per game we we associate Danny Sabas as being a player that does like to carry the ball and we see that with just over three dribbles per match with a 73.9% success rate Mateus Martinelli 2.91 
with a 60.5% success rate of his dribbles shows that he is also someone that likes to carry the ball forwards. He's a passer. He's a dribbler. He's got a lot of really impressive statistics. And it's something that I am getting more kind of... I'm, I'm enjoying looking into this guy. I'm enjoying looking at, at someone like him as maybe what Arsenal could be targeting. We've seen so many kind of players come to the Premier League from South America and flourish. And we're seeing another young Brazilian link with Manchester City, Keiki, who is another player, I believe, at Fluminense too, um, and has played with Mateus Martinelli. So Arsenal should be looking at these. Edu, as we know, is very ingrained with the Brazilian side of things in regards to working there with the Brazilian national side, knowing the young setup, knowing the scouting systems, knowing these guys. So he is someone that's impressive. Fees, he's got a 40 million euro release clause, which I don't imagine Arsenal would be getting anywhere close to paying. It would be a much more reserved figure that we'd negotiate downwards. It would definitely, I imagine, be between the tens to twenty, uh, ten to twenty sort of million euro range, rather than that high end. You think about how much we got Mart Gabriel Martinelli from, although it was from a much smaller Brazilian club in comparison to Fluminense. Um, but I think it's someone that Arsenal could target. It's someone that is exciting. It's a young talent that's showing, as Ewan said earlier, a lot of maturity on his shoulders too as we move into the final part of the show then this is of course where we get your thoughts and feelings so let me know guys in the chat box what you feel about this possible transfer is Mateus Martinelli someone that you think that Arsenal should be looking to bring in and if so let me know why and if not let me know the different side of things as well I want to scroll up to the top because I saw a really good comment from Osman uh, Osman says I saw his highlight reel on YouTube and he looks a talent but he plays in the same position and has a similar style to Miguel Aziz why would we need him this is a good point Osman and I'm glad that you brought it up I think that a lot of people kind of get very attached to young players that come through our system and you should it's great to see players come through the Arsenal system and get into that first team but what I would say to that is that if there's an opportunity to sign a exceptionally good young talent and we saw that with Martinelli. I think you have to go with it. You have to be ruthless. You have to bring in what is best for the team. And I think bringing in someone of this quality at this age that is already showing maturity at just 19 years of age is something that I think will impress uh, a lot of kind of Arsenal fans when he comes into the team. Matt G says, how many Martinelli's are going to fit on our subs bench? Oh, Matt, I see what you did there, son. Um, Mr. Ugagagu, uh, I've pronounced that completely wrong, <laughs> says, hang on, have I travelled 20 years back in time? Loving the new visuals, son. Thank you all so much, mate. Really appreciate it. I hope you are enjoying the new look TGT and how it is featuring. And I really appreciate all the comments that I'm reading every single day. Uh, Daniel Roberts says, would Martinelli be better with Partey or could he work with a granite jacket? I think, Dan, that he works with both because he doesn't, he, for me, when you want to look at a partner for Thomas Partey, and this is what I'm saying, is that he's still very young. He still would need to develop. He wouldn't come straight into the first team. I think he would be quite similar to Martinelli, where he gradually gets more appearances in the first team when he comes in, but he wouldn't be a guaranteed starter straight away. He's a prospect signing. He's a young kid. But because of his mobility, it doesn't set him aside to be necessarily kind of one or the other i think he can go with both i think if he was a bit slower a little bit less mobile then you're thinking he'd be more of a partner for thomas Partey. but because of his mobility he can actually kind of be a bit of a backup option to thomas Partey initially until he develops and gets better and uh, and matures even further but i think he gives you a lot of different options definitely so um Temi says uh, would we get basuma and this guy together i will move el nenny and sabas on Ax uh, Aziz, I believe you're talking about there, is going to go on loan. And I think that what people worry about sometimes is just because you bring a young guy in in one position doesn't necessarily mean it rules out bringing in a Basuma, bringing in someone else, and Wepu, a Coop Miners, these types of guys. It doesn't rule out that at all. I think that if you bring in this young guy, he wouldn't necessarily go straight into the first team. He could even be on the bench or play with the under 23s. But if there's a chance to get a really good young prospect in, I think Arsenal should look to do it personally. Osman says, Tom, I think the player we should be targeting is someone like Manuel Locatelli. I agree with you. I think he's a very exciting talent, someone that would be more disciplined than necessarily Partey or Xhaka would. Um, but I think that when there's the options out there, he could be more of one of the expensive types and not able to get him in for kind of a more reasonable fee. We're going to wrap the video up there. Thank you ever so much, people, for tuning in live and giving your live thoughts and reactions. If you want to know when we're doing these shows live, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Gunital TV. We always try and tell you and give some notice as to when these shows are going to go live. Yesterday, we did a tactical breakdown covering Ashraf Hakimi from Inter Milan. So if you haven't checked that one out already, please make sure you do. And throughout the whole summer and leading up to the summer, we will be doing these shows on every player that Arsenal gets linked to, looking into them, giving you guys 
guys the insight, getting the expert side of things as well. So make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel to make sure you get all of that great content throughout the summer. And uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow morning for Let's Talk Arsenal and the preview show for the Slavia Prague game as well. But other than that, it's been a pleasure to speak to you guys as always. And as always, up the arse.